In this video, I'm going to talk about arachidonic acid and eicosanoids. This is a bit of a tautology because arachidonic acid is an eicosanoid, but eicosanoid also encompasses the products of arachidonic acid. Now, arachidonic acid is a fatty acid that sits in cell membranes. So here's a phospholipid, and these are the things that make up cell membranes. And here's the cell membrane. It's a bilayer of phospholipids. Arachidonic acid can be cleaved off the membrane by an enzyme called phospholipase A2. So here's our arachidonic acid here. Now there are two major pathways that arachidonic acid can take. I'll look at this pathway first. This is a less important one. It gets converted by lipoxygenase, which is another enzyme, into the leukotrienes, which are a group of molecules, which are named leukotriene A4, which can be converted into leukotriene B4, leukotriene C4, or eventually leukotriene D4. Now, leukotrienes can act at leukotriene receptors. And physiologically, this leads to bronchoconstriction in the lungs. So a pharmacological intervention can be used, and the classic drug is one called Montelukast which is a leukotriene receptor antagonist, and it's a treatment for asthma. The second pathway goes via this enzyme, cyclooxygenase, also known as COX. And it converts arachidonic acid into prostaglandin H2. This is the prostaglandin precursor. Now prostaglandin H2 can be converted to a number of products. In platelets, it can be converted into thromboxane A2, also known as TXA2. And this is very bad for the heart and cardiovascular system. But prostaglandin H2 can also be converted into the prostaglandins. These are the proper prostaglandins, and they're more stable than H2. These are known as PGD2, PGE2, and PGF2. Now they're really good for your stomach, and they have a protective effect on it. But they can also cause pain, fever, and inflammation. A third product that can come from prostaglandin H2 
occurs in the endothelium of blood vessels. And this is a molecule called prostacyclin, also known as PGI2. Now it's really good for your heart. Now a very important class of drugs that acts at this cyclooxygenase is a class of drugs known as the NSAIDs or the non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs and ibuprofen and aspirin are examples of these NSAIDs. These are used as a treatment for pain, fever and inflammation which makes sense because they block the production of prostaglandins. But aspirin in particular, in low doses, can be used for its cardiovascular protective effects. This is because the platelets can't produce cyclooxygenase again because they have no nucleus. However, the endothelial cells of the blood vessels do have a nucleus and they can produce more cyclooxygenase after the NSAIDs have destroyed theirs. This will send the levels of prostacyclin in the blood back up, but keep the levels of thromboxane A2 low in the blood, so the overall effect is going to be a positive one. The major side effect from using NSAIDs are gastrointestinal upsets, particularly gastritis and gastric ulcers. This is because the protective effect of the prostaglandins on the stomach has been removed by inhibiting cyclooxygenase. And that's an overview of arachidonic acid and the eicosanoids.